I got the goods. It is now time for another baby step towards the goal of getting my XS400 Cafe Racer back into decent looking and running condition. Now, I know for some of you, this is not your favorite type of content. That's fine. You don't have to stick around, but keep in mind what the goal is. In the past, I've expressed a lot of interest in trying to get a a bicycle to hang off of the back of this thing, looking sick and running well. Why? Well, I mean, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but I mean, because I like riding this thing and sometimes I wanna ride this and go biking. And there was this show produced in 2012 by Red Bull called Life Behind Bars. It starred Brandon Semenuk and all his friends. And in the intro and episode two of season one, I think, he has a Mach 1 Mustang that has four bikes hanging off the back and they go on like a road trip to, I don't know, California somewhere. That like cool picture of an early 70s muscle car with the modern bikes on the back going to do all this cool stuff that I like has been burned into my mind since I watched those episodes. And while I don't necessarily own a cool car anymore, I do have a motorcycle and I want to emulate that. I want to be able to do the stuff that I saw on those episodes myself here on the channel. That is like the biggest and most main motivation behind wanting to do this. But obviously there's some work to do here. And today, as I explained my intentions, when we first introduced the fact that I was gonna be working on this a little bit on the channel, I just wanna take achievable baby steps every time I work on it. I think there's a benefit to having a goal to start with and finish when you get into a project. And today's is going to be just cleaning up all this gross cut off stuff all these welds and everything, and then get the rear end actually lined up so that when we put the hoop on, it doesn't sit to the left like it always has. So by the end of working on this, this should all be cleaned up. This should be straight. Wondering why I'm deciding to do this outside. It just feels a little bit safer to uh, be grinding at steel with uh, out a wood floor that is soaked in oil and gasoline. So pretty good progress just for like a couple hours of sticking a grinder into all of the spots where there's a lot of grossness left over from previous work. But I found myself trying to fit, kind of fit this on um, to get it on there straight. And then I started to drive myself a little bit crazy by wondering if like I really am off by anything. So I started measuring it. The measurements of the frame say that this should go on straight um, at least from the reference points that I'm measuring from, but old bikes, I don't know that they're necessarily straight from factory anyway. So, but I think what I'll end up doing, I ordered another one of these with an actual kick up. This tail loop's just a little bit more like flat tracker, dirt tracker style. This bike has never been that. It's always been a cafe racer. So when that shows up and I'm ready to weld it on, um, if there is any sort of discrepancy, if it does seem crooked, I'll just 
cut a little bit off of the new one to make it straighten and, and go together well. Another thing I'm glad I took the time to do I was just taking the time to file and clean these welds. These welds were not good at all. But this tubing here is gonna serve a purpose for putting the electronics tray in, so I don't really wanna like take it out because it's in there, it's doing its job. I'm gonna use it anyway. Why would I cut and miter another piece just to weld it back in probably just as poorly? It's like an old Cannondale now. File down your welds and it becomes a feature. No one needs to know if they're bad. Well. Tracking on the new tail loop says it should be here by around December 22nd, possibly January 8th, but if it's here by next week or a week after, we've got a good opportunity to get even more done and start kind of straightening up this rear end. And then we can mock up the electronics tray and the rest of the pan, possibly the seat pan to go with it. For now, I guess, we're just kind of ready for it to show up which is exactly the kind of steps that I'm looking to do. Nothing I just did was overwhelming. It took like an hour and a half. I'm happy, I'm not frustrated. I can walk away from this wanting to do more instead of dreading doing more. My friend Nick, who's in Ontario, was sick of seeing this, this Black & Decker drill in videos, which makes sense, he's a professional carpenter and no professional carpenter wants to see anybody using Black & Decker stuff. So when he saw these were on sale, he saw it as the opportunity to solve the problem of having to see something that bothered him. Which I just think is just like an objectively funny way of solving a problem. Now I haven't used these yet because I haven't really had an opportunity to like build something like that, but I wanna use them because they're new and they're better than what I have and I appreciate that they're here. I'm thinking the saddle on the raw copper has bent rails. It's actually kind of bent over to the right a little bit. I don't know how it happened. I can feel it while I'm riding. I hate it. I want this one gone. So I'm gonna put a different one on. I see no reason to not do this with power tools. Okay, I found a reason why the tool doesn't fit. Pedals. Pedals have always sort of eluded this bike and I've always had plastic ones on it for some reason. And these having a six millimeter Allen bolt on their axle, I can use the new drill for it. The nicest pedal installer I've ever used. Nick, thank you. That is the end of this vlog. Thanks for letting me make motorbike content like once a week or so. Also, there's like a small possibility of a snowstorm tomorrow, which means we're probably gonna go ride that thing.